Introduction to Exponents and Roots. So I just need to clarify what exponents are, how to work them properly, and what roots are and how to work them properly, because you will see some of these in your online homework problems. The first thing that we're going to go over is just your basic introduction to exponents. The way exponents are written is to a smaller number to the top right of the bottom number. The bottom number here, this A, is called a base. So I have the base A to an exponent or to the power of N. And sometimes you hear me use the word exponent and sometimes you hear me use the word power. Basically, they're interchangeable. Now, the simplest mistake that I see students do is they just multiply these. Well, a to the nth power is not simply a times n. What it is, is the base times itself in amount of times. So base of a times a times a times blah, 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 times a, the n amount of times. So I have some examples that go with this. I suggest you to pause the video and see if you can work out these examples on your own. So starting with the first example, that's just trying to get you used to what exponents are. Now remember, this is not 2 times 3, which gives you 6. This is 2 times 2 times 2, the base times itself 3 times. Now to multiply these out, you just pick 2 and then just keep multiplying the next one. So 2 times 2 gives me 4, and 4 times 2 gives me 8. So that means 2 to the third power is 8. Example 2 here. Same thing, but this is in fraction form. Well, we know to multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So let me write this out completely. So this is 3 halves times itself 4 times, because that's what the power of 4 means. But actually, there's a cheater step that we can do with fractions to the exponents. If I multiply this all the way across, this gives me 3 to the 4th power. And if I multiply this all the way across, that gives me 2 to the 4th power. So really, I can distribute this power to both my numerator and my denominator. Now, 3 to the 4th power is 3 times itself 4 times. So 3 times 3 gives me 9, and I can do that twice. And then 9 times 9 gives me 81. So 3 to the 4th power gives me 81. The denominator, 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 gives me 4, 2 times 2 gives me 4, and then 4 times 4 gives me 16. So my denominator here is 16. See if you can reduce, but I'll give you a hint. If you can't reduce here, then you definitely should not be able to reduce here. So my final answer, 81 over 16. Now, example 3 and example 4 are very similar, and I did that for specific reasons. The question to you is, will these give you the exact same answer, or will these actually give you different answers? And the answer is, is that these two are going to give you different answers. I'm actually going to work example 4 first, because it makes more sense. Example 4 is saying that I want to take negative 3 times itself two times. And the parentheses there indicate that. Negative 3 times negative 3 because that is all to my second power. Negative times negative gives you positive. 3 times 3 gives you 9. So the answer to example 4 is positive 9. Example 3 looks almost the same, but is in fact different. The negative does not go to the power. And to emphasize this, I can write this as negative times 3 squared. Notice there is nothing holding the negative to the 3. So really, this is just 3 to the second power. So 3 times 3 gives me 9, and then I copy down the negative that I had from the previous step. So the answer to this one is negative 9. So be careful on which way the problem asks it. And more importantly, be careful on how you enter it into the calculator. Because if you enter it into the calculator this way, but you really mean this answer here, notice that the calculator will give you an incorrect answer. So 
So you have to be careful on how to enter things into your calculator because the calculator will do exactly what you tell it to do. So that's my introduction to exponents. Now let me introduce roots to you. Another word for roots is radical. So if you see me talking about radical, that means the exact same thing as roots. The reason that we need radicals in the first place is because in math, we always need an opposite. So addition and subtraction are opposites of each other. Multiplication and division are opposites of each other. We just learned about exponents. We need an opposite to go with exponents, and that comes from radicals or roots. So we need something to cancel out the exponents. So notice I have an exponent of n here. If I want to cancel that out, then I need the nth root of it. And you can see that this symbol here means root. So this symbol is a root or a radical, and it is the opposite of an exponent. So the nth root of the nth power cancel each other out, and that leaves you with just the base of a. Now for this purpose only, we're only going to be focusing on square roots and cube roots. Later on in the class, we'll get into a bigger depth of roots, but right now just square roots and cube roots. Square roots we see is written with that symbol there. If there's no number in the little crevice here, it is indicated to be a square root. So it is the opposite of a square power. If we're talking about cube roots, it will be indicated with a three in the crevice. And again, that is opposite of the third power. So let's see some examples of these here. Now, again, I, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can figure these out on your own. Starting with example one, this is a square root. There's no number in the crevice, so it is assumed to be a square root. Now, this negative is on the outside, so I'm going to temporarily ignore it because it is on the outside of the root. So right now, I'm just going to focus on the square root of 36. Well, that means I need the opposite of a square. So I need something times itself two times to give me 36. Well, if I think about it, 6 times itself two times will give me 36. So I'm going to rewrite 36 as 6 squared. And then I'm just going to copy everything else that I had from before. I had a negative, and then I had this square root. Now remember, square root and square cancel out. So that leaves me with the inside of 6. And then this negative, I'm just going to copy down from step to step. So my final answer here is negative 6. Example two is the exact same thing, but it is a cube root. So I need something times itself three times to give me negative 64. And this one has to be a negative because my inside is negative. Now that's different than example one because my negative there was on the outside. Well, if I think about the number, so if I do one cubed, that gives me one. If I do two cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, that gives me 8. 3 cubed, or 3 times 3 times 3, gives me 27. And 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4, gives me 64. And I could keep going if I need to, but this is where I can stop. Not only that, but the negative. If I take a negative 1 and if I cube it, that gives me a negative 1. And that's the same for all of these. If I take a negative an odd amount of times, that will leave me with a negative answer. So I, on my inside here, I have negative 4. Negative 4 to the third power will cancel out with my third root. So those cancel, and that leaves me with my final answer of negative 4. Example 3 has a fraction involved. Well, we learned fractions that we can focus on the numerator and the denominator separately in exponents, so we can do the same thing in roots. This is a square root, so I want to come up with the square root of my numerator and the square root of my denominator separately. 
Well, something squared to give me 16 is 4 squared, because 4 times 4 gives me 16. And something squared to give me 81 is 9, because 9 times 9 gives me 81. The square and the roots cancel out, so that leaves me with positive 4 over positive 9. Now, if you can start to skip this step here, and you automatically know what those squares and those cubes are, perfect. That's hopefully what we can get you to do in the long run. If you need to write it now, that's fine, but ideally we're going to start to be skipping that step. So my final answer to this problem is 4 over 9. Okay, my last example is the square root of negative 25. Now, at first glance, I'm assuming that most people would probably give me the answer of negative 5. Because if you take a 5 and you square it, or 5 times 5, that gives you the answer of 25. Now, that definitely gives you the right number involved, but we are more concerned about the negative in this example. If you take a negative 5 and you square it, a negative times negative gives you a positive 25. So there's nothing that we can actually take to the second power or to the square, which we definitely need because this is a square root, that's going to give me negative 25. So this problem was actually a trick problem. So there's actually no real answer to this problem. Now you might know a way to get around this using imaginary numbers. But we're not in that much depth yet in this class, so we're just going to temporarily ignore that imaginary number to R. So the trick to this problem is you cannot take an even root or a square root of a negative number. So in this example, I have a square root of a negative number. So automatically you should know that that is no real answer. But notice I can have very similar versions of it. I can have a cube root or an odd power of a negative number. That is perfectly fine. And that's because I can take a negative an odd amount of times and still end up with a negative. Also looking back at example one, if the negative is on the outside of the square root, that is much different than the negative being on the inside of the square root. So if the negative is on the outside of the square root, it just stays on the outside, and it just carries down from step to step. So hopefully I've made you aware of all the tricks that go with exponents and roots. And remember, this video is just a very basic introduction of these two things. We will be getting into much more detail with these later on.